on, let's get it. All right, welcome to Child's Play with Sam Kim, and today we're joined by June Ajmali, the triple threat comedian, actor, EMC that's been making a huge splash from out of his box. Hilarious skits from Quarantine and Chill and Ajima while featuring on CNN News, representing the Dirty South Atlanta, A Town Down. You feel me? You can find him on IG on at June Lee Comedy. Wow, that was what an intro! Thank you, Sam. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, for sure, it's a for pleasure. sure, man. So like, I you know I love that you're on the show. Mm -hmm. You know I appreciate it. Thank you for coming. Thank um, you for you know, uh, having me as your first guest. No, by the way. no, for what sure, an honor. Man. I would say I would say it's an honor to have you. You know what I mean? As I'm a here, Korean American, I'm here before you blow up, man. Yo, trying to be like you. You know <laughs> what I mean? But uh, yeah, let's uh, jump right into it. You know? So tell me about your childhood, man. You're from Georgia. So tell me how you I'm grew from, up. I'm from I'm from Guam. Oh, you're from Guam. How, yeah, how I, the I was, country. I was born in Guam. That's like that was kind of my fun fact growing up. Okay. And then, but I I, I moved to Georgia when I was four. Gotcha. And so I spent a huge chunk of my childhood and just uh, early adult life in Georgia. I spent like, what, 20, 22 years or so in, okay. in Georgia. And uh, yeah, now I'm in LA. So do you know like multiple languages because you lived in Guam? I'm bilingual. Like, I yeah. mean, yeah, Guam is still US territory. And, and I, I grew up speaking Korean and English in Guam. Gotcha. And um, yeah, I wish I, I could speak more than that but no for sure for sure no that's all good <laughs> so like t tell me about how you were growing up as a child like what kind of person were you as personality a child, wise? i was i was pretty goofy yeah i was the class clown oh. um there was a period in my life when i was in what like first second grade i i would get time out every day almost every day yeah so like my, my classes had like <laughs> one class had a like green light yellow light red light for everyone sure. started on green with yeah, like a yeah, clip. yeah and I got to the point where I would just skip yellow. Uh -huh. Yellow was like the warning stage. Right, right, right. I would just go to red. Straight to red. And sometimes, some days, I would be the only name on red. <laughs> and it was pretty embarrassing. But to kind of dive into that, the, the, reasoning, the reason I justify it was um, I, it was worth getting in trouble if, if I could get a laugh from the class. Right, if right, If I could right. make someone laugh, like that feeling uh -huh. was my high when I was a kid. Gotcha. That, gotcha. Was, my, that was my drug. Like, so it's kind of like meant to be for you to like mm -hmm. make other people laugh and make them feel happy. At a young age, yeah. I, at a very young age, I realized I had that talent, I had that skill. Uh -huh. And so I really honed in on that. Yeah. Oh, that's what's up. Yeah. So like, I know you chose comedy, right? Yeah. Coming from Georgia. For like sure. how did your parents first react, you know? As American Asian parents, they want us to be either doctors, exactly. lawyers, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? So, like, what did they say to you first? You know, it's a, it was so tricky and weird. So, my dad was always kind of more supportive than my mom. Okay. My mom, it was a very, very tough and long, long conversation. Yeah? And it's weird because, like, they would, they would gas me up uh -huh. and they would say stuff like, we would watch this very popular Korean um broadcast called Kegumen. Okay. So it's like a it's like a live it's kinda like Korean oh, I, I can't even give that SNL almost, but it's like it's like live pre, uh, performances gotcha. on stage. Gotcha. And so that was my favorite show growing up. Uh -huh. And then my parents would always be like, "Oh, we could see you doing this. Like, yeah, I think yeah, you'd be yeah, good." Yeah. I mean, and I would get excited, like, "You know, oh yeah, yeah, I right, want to be right, a comedian." Right. And then my mom's like, "Wait, relax. What? What? Are you? And I'm like, "Wait, time out. What? Like, gotcha. she's like, she's, to you she's gassing me up, but then the second that I'm like getting hyped up and uh -huh, excited, uh -huh. she's like, "Oh no, no, no! I have to kill it. I have to kill that yeah, flame. Yeah, kill yeah, that yeah, fire." Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was a constant conversation. Anytime right. I would get too into a conversation with my parents about wanting to be a comedian or like a, like a musician or something, I played, right. I played guitar, or any, any type of dream that I had, uh -huh. they would, she would steer me back and be Got like, it. okay, but let's be practical. Like, you're right, not right, gonna right. make it. You're not. So, so I guess, at what point did, they, did, it, did it all change for them to be supportive? Uh, I think with a lot of Asian immigrant parents, unfortunately, you need receipts. Right. You need something to vouch. You need something right, to right, show. Right. Like monetary form exactly. or, like or some sort some of something. Sort of, yeah, right. And I, I still remember the distinct moment where my parents, especially my mom, kind of turned around, came around, mm -hmm. was um, there's a big, the biggest K-pop event in America. It's called K-Con okay. convention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I got invited to my first K-Con. As a host? As an MC for, oh, okay. for yeah, yeah, yeah. a few segments. Right. And um, that was the first time I got booked 
to go to to fly out to a different state. Okay. And I purposely shot a YouTube video just because like, it was my it was the first cool experience. Right. But not a lot of people know this. But the the main reason I shot that vlog was not for myself, but it was it was for my parents. Right. It was for just my mom. to kind of I just see wanted to like show her like, this of... is this is like what I'm doing yeah, yeah, and right, it's right. such a on a big scale. Uh huh. And uh, when she saw that YouTube video, that I think that really changed her perspective. That's and good. One, one story I'll never forget is. So there's this thing called like kuyoki up there, uh-huh. and so like where people they have gatherings at people's homes, right, and so right, it was right. my family like they they had a gathering at their house, and I was leaving I was living with my parents, I was leaving the home to go hang out with some friends, and as I was putting on shoes, I heard uh, a video playing in the mm-hmm. living room in the mm-hmm. dining room, and I it was my YouTube video, it was, it was from KCon, yeah, the YouTube vlog, uh-huh. and my mom was like showing her friends, right, and right, right. it was that moment I was like, oh, she's like proud of me. Right. She was like showing off to like her friends. Like she could friends. show off to her like yeah. church homies, mm-hmm. like you know, like and then, mothers and everything, <laughs> right? No, I feel you. So that was a that was like a really a cool moment for oh, me. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So like, what was I guess your mindset when you started choosing to be a comedian? Like, how did that transition change? Like, um, so the thing is, I'm fortunate. I'm blessed enough to say that I knew what I wanted to do since I was four. Okay. I wanted to be an actor, comedian, just entertainer. Right. That was like my first dream. Uh-huh. And in school, you write out like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Right, a lot right, of kids right. write fireman, you know, like doctor, nurse, uh-huh. or something like that. But I wrote comedian. And my teacher was like, well, that's unique. Right. And, and um, yeah, I don't know. But it, it took a very long time that we, where we can get into all no, that. Of course. Of I course. came full circle. I, I took a very practical route. But I mean, I've always just known. Uh-huh. And but I ran away from it for like twenty years. Right. But because uh, you were thinking practically, right? I was thinking very practically, right. and I I wanted to give up on it. But I think that's one thing about like your dream. Mm-hmm. It just that's something that just never really leaves you when you right. just know. Yeah, exactly. It's always in the back of your head, itching. Exactly. Yeah. You got to where you are now because of that, right? Yes. The journey. For sure. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So I don't I don't regret anything. Mm-hmm. No, for I sure. Don't, I don't consider anything like a bad experience, bad moment. All right. So during the journey, I guess, is there any time where you felt like you were going to quit? Mm-hmm. Or mm-hmm. like, yo, I'm, I, I got to pack my bags, go back to Georgia. Or exactly. I'm in Georgia, like, yo, this isn't it. I got to get my nine to five corporate job. Yeah. Um, I think I'm in such a great place right now and such a relatable place uh-huh. for probably a lot of people that either watch my stuff or just even like listening to this or, or other things. Because I'm still, I guess, on the come up, mm-hmm. I would say. I'm, I'm nowhere where I want to be. Right. But to answer your question, there was a period um, when I was in Georgia and maybe college or something like that, or even post-college. I wanted, for about five months, mm-hmm. every single night before I, go, I went to bed, every night I was like, oh, like, just quit now. Right. Like, why, why you're wasting so much time. Mm-hmm. And to kind of give context into that... Um, I, after I graduated, I went to New York for mm-hmm. an internship, a really good internship. Right, right, like, right. Um, and then, like two weeks into that internship, at an advertising agency, I, I knew this is not what I wanted to do. Uh-huh. And I didn't get the job offer, no, to no surprise. I came back home, I worked at a startup, uh-huh. and then after a year, um, I got laid off. Got it. And then I had money saved up, and I was like, I was feeling very insecure about that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm financial stability I was at home and then I was just like pumping out videos um, but yeah during that whole process I wanted to quit every day mm-hmm. and uh, despite what people see on Instagram and my videos and you know comedy mm-hmm. humor is my comfort zone but I can be deeply insecure of and course that's something I'm trying to battle yeah, even right, until right. now just like everyone else no for sure right. everyone yeah, has their battles exactly, right? Exactly, right, right. Right. Oh, that's what's up it's good that you're truthful about that, you know what I mean? I think, yeah, I mean, I definitely want to kind of normalize and bring that up to in conversation more. And I'm trying to not for anyone else because I don't like to define masculinity for mm-hmm. anyone else but myself. So for m- myself, I'm trying to redefine masculinity and what that looks like and mm-hmm. just kind of breaking the whole fragile masculinity thing and just like being more upfront about your insecurities and just being more exactly um, just vulnerable. Right. I think that's really manly. Right. I think that's sexy. You know what I mean? Hundred percent. So I that's agree. what I'm trying to practice inside. Right, 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 right. I, I definitely think um, being able to show your emotions mm-hmm. and talk about your emotions, mm-hmm. right, mm-hmm. in a very comfortable way, and at the same time be accepting of others, right? Because right, right. we're all on a 
all of us are on a different journey, right? Exactly. And we're living this life for the first time. Mm -hmm. So we're all going to make mistakes, you know? Yeah. So like, I definitely understand where you're coming from, for sure. So what would you say, like, is the hardest part about you being a comedian? Um, you know, being a comedian is tough in the sense that there are so many funny people out there, especially in the world of content. Um, especially nowadays that there's like TikTok, there's just so many platforms. Uh -huh. And I see so many up and coming, you know, kids or, or people that have been in the game. Mm -hmm. And it's very easy to get self-conscious or insecure about like, oh, there's people like far funnier and more creative than me. Mm -hmm. You know, I always have to like stop myself when I see a really funny video. Right. I have to like kind of check myself and pump the brakes when I find myself being too insecure about it. Like, oh my God, that's such a great idea. Why couldn't I think thought of that? Right, right, right. Because I have to stop myself and remind myself like, oh, there are things that I've come up with that uh -huh. were super creative that no one else could, could have come up with. Or, exactly. you know what I mean? It's just like right. the, the, the whole struggle of like comparing yourself to mm -hmm. your peers and people around you. Like even for myself, I would say like, I like I even feel behind even in technology, yeah. you know, because like I don't use TikTok, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. and now TikTok it just blew up. It's blown up, yeah. You know what I mean? So it's just like just little little nuances where like kids play certain app games, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm mm -hmm. just like, how? Like, what does that up. even mean? Yeah, like you know, like Bumble, Tinder, uh -huh. all of that, you uh -huh. know. I'm just like, oh, I thought it used to be Tinder. Now it's like. Hinge, everything you change, I mean, everything you could imagine, you know, right. like Bible Christian school, like <laughs> let's get together, like farmers dating app, yeah, you know. Yeah, so it yeah. just like it blows my mind how fast like technology, yeah. you know. And then especially with that, it gives a platform for like every child and every mm -hmm, human mm -hmm. to express right. their creative minds, yeah. right? So that's you know. So I would say my biggest, I guess, question that I really wanted to know is just like, what is your biggest failure? Yeah. Right. Th so far that you felt. And then what did you learn from that and how did you maneuver? Um, one of my biggest failures that I just touched up on was like my job experience post-college. Um, I felt like I was working my whole life towards that moment. So I studied advertising. Mm -hmm. I majored in advertising and I minored in communication. And um, right after college, I got a really good internship, like I said, at a really good agency in New York. Uh -huh. And so I was like, oh, this is it. Yeah. I'm going to... My life is gonna be in New York. I'm gonna, you know, work my way up this ladder right. and, and and just grind it out and be really successful. Uh -huh. And like I said, two weeks in, being an account manager um, intern, I hated it. Right. I saw like what goes into it. I'm like, this is not. I can't see myself doing this for the next twenty years. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm miserable two weeks in. Right. And I was like, sure, maybe I'm just an intern. Maybe it'll get better. But I was like, this is not what I want. Do. So how long was that time period? It was a summer. So it was a summer job? summer internship. So as soon as you graduated, it was yeah. a summer internship? As soon as I graduated, so I was just really, I felt secure. Got so that was my, I felt very comfortable, secure that no, I landed sure. something like right away. your first away. job out of college, your right. parents were probably so proud. Mm -hmm. And they course. were, and it's, it's like, I, I got validation right. from my parents. Of course. Um, and the thing is, I felt like, a lot, I think a lot of kids can relate that there was a lot of negative reinforcement. Mm -hmm. You know, when you do something good, right. then they... Then they they're, they award you, and then they're proud of. Then they love you more. Right, right, right. But when you know you don't necessarily get the grades or get the job or, or um, do what they expect from you, or, or and then it's just like they're not as proud of. They don't love you as much. So that's what it feels like as mm -hmm. a kid. So getting that internship, I felt very validated from my parents. And so when that didn't work out, I felt pretty bummed out and got a little insecure and self conscious about that. I came home and I got a job at a startup. And long story short. I got laid off from that, so that was like, I was very insecure about that, you know what I mean? And, um, yeah, and I was like, oh my gosh, like, I don't want to tell people that I got like laid off. Of course. It's a of long course. story, but. No, no, I understand, um, of course. No, so that happened and it yeah. sucked. And it hurts people's pride, it, it, oh my, yeah. it hurt my no, ego sure, so sure. much. But looking back, uh -huh. that was the best thing that could have happened to yeah. me. Yeah. I think it's your laptop. Yeah, <laughs> it's my bad. That's fine. So, um, um, but yeah, so like that, looking back in hindsight, that was the best thing that could happen to me. Um, so after getting laid off, like I said, I had all this free time mm -hmm. and money saved up. And so that's when I was like on a real creative high, right? Probably one of the biggest and longest stretch of a creative high. Uh -huh. I was just pumping out content. And this is when you were in Georgia or in LA? This is when I was in Georgia. Yeah. 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 Okay. So this was around four years ago, got like it, around got it. three to four years ago. And 
I was pumping out content and I finally uploaded something that blew up and right. that was like my big viral moment uh -huh. that I mean yeah that, that it started everything so how long were you in Georgia doing comedy before you moved out to LA I well I've been doing comedy or entertainment performing since I was a kid uh -huh. like in church right 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 like a lot of Christmas skits Got or, or Got when churches the youth group when they go on retreats mm -hmm. Part of part of the um, program is they have a day where the, they get into groups and they perform skits, uh -huh. and then like the best group wins. Like the dances and things. The right? dances, right. The of course, skits. of course. Where there's like um, twenty churches coming together. Exactly. And, like, and yeah, of course, one of my coolest moments was there was a huge conference where uh -huh. all of the churches, major churches from the southeast, got together. And it was like the biggest retreat. Yeah. And my group won that skit because like I, I, that was my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was like the director. Like the actor, and I was like coordinating, coordinating with everyone. I was like, are you like directing everyone? Right, 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 right. Um, usually, they, there's like a like a leader, mm -hmm. like a high school college person. That's of course, like, of course. But I was like, no, 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 I got it. Don't worry. Yeah. And they're like, oh my god, like what the, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so that, I, I love that. Stuff, right. And that's yeah. where I just like really thrived. Right. And so right. I think that church community, like black community, uh -huh. the choir, right, that really fosters a lot of musicians, a lot of artists. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think. The, the church community and the, within the uh, the black community is a huge and for for likewise with like a lot of Asian Americans mm -hmm. because the parents um, end up going to church especially in the southeast mm -hmm. as a sense of community to meet other Koreans to meet other Asians that is true and yeah. so through that I fostered a lot and curated a lot of my skills mm -hmm. as an actor today as an entertainer gotcha yeah. what church did you go to in Atlanta um, I grew up going to I, I went to a few but I went to Han. Oh, yo, shout out to Sayan. Yeah. And shout out to Yanap too, KCPC. Yes, nice. I never went to KCPC. I know that was like a big one. <laughs> right. And then I, back in Marietta, I went to uh, Songyak. Okay. Where we had a, there was a couple of tournament, like basketball yeah, tournaments yeah, yeah, that a lot yeah, of church yeah. came to. I remember, to. Endorable. Yep. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay, so tell me about uh, you moving out to LA. So I know you had some, you had like a very interesting journey out here. Yeah, so the way that happened was very sporadic. Um, a buddy called me at midnight and um, said, hey, my lease is ending uh -huh. this month, May. Right. Um, and I know you've been thinking about moving to LA. Do you want to potentially you know, room together, like find someone else and find a place? Got it. And I've been thinking about moving to LA for like a couple years. Uh -huh. And I told myself that year, 2019, I'm going to seriously consider moving to LA. Mm -hmm. And then that conversation came up. And four days later, I told my parents I'm moving. Yeah, and yeah. you just packed your bags just, and went. And then yeah, for that that month, I was like, oh my god, what am I doing? I was just like packing up, figuring stuff out, and then I I drove my car by myself from Georgia to LA. Yeah. yeah. How long was that trip? I did it in three days. Three days. Which is insane. That's fucking insane. I usually like that's good for two people. Right. I did it by myself. Uh, three days, two nights. So, the first day I drove fourteen and a half hours. Straight adrenaline rush at that point. Yeah, huh? It was crazy. Yeah. I, you yeah. wanted the sunshine. I mean, that was like. I thought that would be very poetic. My first accomplishment going <laughs> into LA, the fact that if I can do this by myself, uh -huh. then I can do anything. All right. Oh, okay. That's, yeah. no, that's what's up. That's a good mindset, honestly. <laughs> so, like, I would say, like, when you started your career, right, as a comedian, mm -hmm. looking back with like IG and everything, like, what's mm -hmm. one thing that you wish you knew before you started? Um, that I'm the shit. Like, I say that lightly because I, I have so many self-esteem issues okay i wish back then i knew that i had the it factor right just a little bit more confidence a little bit more self-esteem right that i got what it takes uh -huh. and to stop being so in my head about yeah, yeah, yeah. being insecure so a lot of self self-doubt in a way yeah right? and i think that's one of the biggest factors and um the biggest traits mm -hmm. of, bef of of any profession but especially in the entertainment industry um, you've got to like be in tune with yourself first right, 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 right. And you got to be confident and comfortable with yourself mm -hmm. and I think if you can even just address and be comfortable with your insecurities mm -hmm. like you are miles ahead of your competitors mm -hmm. yeah so I wish I I wish I just stopped comparing myself at an early age right, right. Yeah. I, I, I definitely think that's something that everyone battles with mm -hmm. right and have to overcome themselves you know in their yeah. own life journey right right right, right. So like for any young comedian that's coming up, yeah. you know, obviously they know who you are, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> they want to be like you. Mm -hmm. What's a, one advice that you would give them 
as a young comedian person that's starting their own Instagram page sure. that wants to be creative and yeah. be different, yeah. what's your advice to them? You know, I, I like the fact that you said like be different mm-hmm. and wants to you know, stand out. And this is going to sound counterintuitive, but one of my best advice in order to get there is copy. Um, not in the form of like, you know, biting someone style or anything mm-hmm. like that, but your role models and your influences, like copy the hell out of them without being, without crossing the line, without being disrespectful, mm-hmm. because it's so hard to find your own voice as an artist. Right. It's so hard to find what makes you unique. Got it. And so when I started out, I mean, I modeled my humor a lot with like David So. Got it. And oh, David So. Yeah. Comedy. So okay. I, I watched him a lot. I just modeled a lot after him, but my brand, I don't curse as much like that and okay. he, he has his own brand right, right, and through right. that I was able to just make minor tweaks and adjustments along the way mm-hmm. and now I'm much more comfortable in my skin mm-hmm. and this sounds a little weird to say but my brand is me just right. like everything that makes me me the way that I act right. all my little nuances and intricacies mm-hmm. that's my brand and that's what makes me special and that's right. what makes me different from anybody else out there no because i could definitely tell like the involvement through your videos you know you feel more comfortable in your own skin Mm -hmm. the way Mm -hmm. you talk even the language right right and you said before you don't curse but at the same time like you use your own verbiage in a way where it's your brand it's who you are and yeah i don't think about it right because it's just me i don't don't think about the things that i'm saying or the way that i talk Mm -hmm. um but it all i guess kind of portrays through my skits and the stuff that I do mm-hmm. and I guess that kind of makes me stand out from other uh, creators out there okay okay yeah so like I know you did a lot of interviews you mm-hmm. know you've been hosts MCs everywhere mm-hmm. so what's the best compliment you've received and why <sighs> wow um, so recently I got to do a CNN interview okay my first international and so like that was a crazy moment right and um, just seeing hearing compliments from like the producers at CNN Mm -hmm. and saying I felt very natural and like for an international interview being broadcast around the world exactly Mm -hmm. they they said I was a natural they wanted me back so that was like a really uh, cool cool moment that I'll never forget and you're talking about BTS right yeah I was I I got to talk about like my Korean culture right and just be just my normal Korean self and so that was yeah, that was so cool. And also, I recently got to interview B.Y. Okay. I had a, a Korean rapper called yeah. B.Y. And um, he's, this was my first, one of my first celebrity interviews too. Okay. And he said that this was one of the best interviews he's had. What question did you ask him? I asked him, I think the question that got him, uh-huh. the question that really stumped him for like 10 minutes uh-huh. was, because he's a Christian. Right. So right. I asked him, if God was sitting here instead of me, right. like if you were sitting next to God right now and you had five minutes with him. What's the one question that you would ask him? And he was he was blank for like five minutes. Uh, he was speechless. He was like, oh my God, no one has ever asked me that. Interesting. And he said that was one of the best questions he's ever been asked. Ah. And so that was, that was a cool moment. No, that's fucking awesome. Yeah, it was really yeah, dope. Yeah, that's really cool. That's really cool. Just to have someone uh, on that caliber, right? Exactly. That gets asked millions of questions, probably answered the same questions every single time to the point where he rehearsed it, right? Right. For you to be able to like stump him. I threw him off. Threw him off, you know? (laughs) It was probably like, oh my God, like I never even thought of that and I'm a Christian. Right. You know what I mean? So that's fucking cool. Yeah. Yeah. So what was the first skit that you've ever created? Man, that's so tough because I I created a lot of videos growing up. Mm -hmm even if I didn't like upload it or if, even if it was through like Facebook or just like on YouTube, like very privately. Right. I did the first video that kind of went viral. I, I recorded with my friend. We did a lip sync video okay. of Avril Lavigne. Huh. Complicated. Got it. Because I'm very expressive right. with my facial expressions and just my body language. And you know, that accumulated like 7,000 views on YouTube. And I was like, oh dude, I'm, I'm viral. Living. Like, I'm famous. You right, know? right, right. But now looking back, you're like, 7,000, I get 100,000. Oh my God. <laughs> but I mean, back when one of the most viral videos on YouTube was the two Chinese guys doing the Backstreet Boys. Oh. Uh, that lip sync. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so that, that was so funny to me. And that was one of the first videos where I was like, oh, people outside of my circle are like watching this. My immediate like Georgia circle, like I'm getting random strangers commenting on this. I was like, oh wait, wow, that's so cool. Huh. People are watching me. Yeah. Mm. So some of your skits like ju- juxtapose. Oh, I skip that. <laughs> so 
How, so how did you find some of your actors and are they your friends like how did you find them to be part of your skit like how, how was that all process working out a you? lot of it is just like naturally I mean organically like friend mm-hmm. of a friend right you just meet people through other people so a lot of like collaboration kind of a thing? lot of collaborations okay. and through collaborations like oh hey like meet my meet my other friend or like I think you guys could work together mm-hmm. and especially like moving to LA I networked I wanted to network and connect with a lot of people which right. I did which uh-huh. was really really cool and yeah some people just like reach out sometimes I reach out oh, that's um, sick. Okay. and but my closest friends aren't actors interestingly enough a uh-huh. lot of my close close friends just yeah just different industries different fields um, but I think that's also really nice to right. just like have a circle outside of that too yeah that's what's up okay yeah. okay so like, you know, I would say like with coronavirus that's happening now, sure. right? It's affected millions of people, mm-hmm. you know, made them unemployed. Mm-hmm. It makes businesses who work hard every day mm-hmm. to close down and mm-hmm. it's not even their fault, right? Yeah. But for me, the way I saw your IG platform, because of coronavirus, it made you think outside the box, yes. you know? Yes. So like, can you explain more towards that? Like how, how you got creative, what you created from that experience? Yeah. I mean, at first when the pandemic hit, it it, there were only negative reactions. Right. Um, and I say this very lightly because, yeah, some people got hit really hard. Some businesses and families got hit really hard. So condolences to them. For sure. But it, from a professional setting, for my career, I tried to make do with mm-hmm. my current situation. And I right. think that's all you can really ask for. Right. And, and, and what can you do with the given situation and how can you kind of maximize and capitalize and make the most out of it. Right. And so I was quarantined at home and I had all this free time to right, make right, skits. And right. I, I had less of an excuse now. Right. And so I was just trying to make more content. And I've always lo- I love hosting. Okay. And I've always liked to do like a dating show. I've always wanted to do something right, along right, those right, lines. Right. So I started my own IG live dating show. Mm-hmm. Just as just for fun. Yeah. And it ended up becoming I did it for like 15, 16 weeks mm-hmm. and still going. For Quarantine and Chill, yeah, right? Yeah, it's called Quarantine and Chill. Shout and out to Glenn. You're shout funny. out to Glenn. Stop yeah. messing with Anna. <laughs> yes, Glenn Glenn was a, is a pivotal uh, part of the show now. Very pivotal, for yeah. sure. Um, he just provides a, what, just a different perspective and it's, right. just, it's just very refreshing. His ad libs. <laughs> it's so yeah, good. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, but yeah, me starting that show was, was I never knew where it would take me but I just uh-huh. like was writing it out and it brought me other opportunities too, which is really yeah. dope. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, can you talk to me about your upcoming Twitch series that you're doing? Yeah. So now I'm kind of pivoting from the IG lives to Twitch. Okay. Because I just think that there's more room to grow. Got it. And expand and just more functionality. So I still want to do host a dating show, uh-huh. a quarantine and show, okay. on Twitch now. So you want to do it live? Yes, it's oh, all okay. live. Nice. And so nice. I still want to um, bring people on. So I just started. So. I'm still onboarding, still getting familiar with the platform, and um, I think there's just a lot of things I could do on Twitch. No, and for sure. I'm comfortable in a live setting because I MC a lot of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I. No, it definitely shows the growth. Yeah. Because you're going from like edited version to now live, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's just everything's on the spot. Right. Yeah. Right. And yeah, that's that. That is also one of my comfort zones too. So. I I'm excited to see where Twitch takes me. Uh-huh. Um, it, it feels like I, it feels like I'm taking a couple steps back right now because mm-hmm. I have to kind of start from scratch and build my Twitch following, and so I I, I'm, I have a lot of concerns and thoughts about that. Okay. But I'm okay. I'm just trying to like you know just buckle down and just trust the process. Right. Consistency is all that matters. Right. And just right? just trust that mm-hmm. my Twitch will grow and it'll be even bigger than my Instagram live for the show. For sure. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to see yeah. what comes out of it. So from quarantine and chill, you know, with the success of that, mm-hmm. you know, I know you started a collaboration with, for a YouTube series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um, yeah, so Jubilee, a big YouTube channel, reached out to me um, because I, I got connected with the founder a little while back. Awesome. And he's, he's familiar with quarantine and chill. Mm-hmm. And they were starting a new dating series too. Got it. And so he reached out to me um, to see if I wanted to be the host. Got it. So uh, they had to pick between a few candidates, and uh-huh. I got chosen. And so, yeah, I mean, <laughs> fingers crossed, if all goes well, they'll continue it. They right. just released a pilot, episode one. Got it. It got a lot of positive 
uh, reviews uh-huh. and especially like on my end they said I did a good job right, right. and so that was really cool to uh, read and see and so if all goes well I'll be hosting my own dating show on Jubilee got it and I will be the so, face of that show got it so it'd be like episode two and three right hopefully it's a hopefully. series yo everyone please like, tune in your your share views. yes comment subscribe yes you know it's, help it's, a brother out <laughs> it's really yeah? it's critical very critical very critical so tell me um, so as you said like who the most influential people were was mm-hmm. like David So, right? I wouldn't, um, in that life stage, mm-hmm. he was one of them. Okay. Um, growing up, some of my biggest influences, I grew up watching stand up. Got a it. Lot. Oh. I was introduced to stand up at a young age. Uh-huh. So, Dave Chappelle, Eddie Murphy, a lot of black comedians, and especially growing up in Atlanta. Yeah. Just a lot of, there was a lot of black comedians of and just artists yeah. on the rise. And like growing up, listening to hip hop, mm-hmm. like I love like Eminem and just like the grind of like a rap artist and right. like, like their life journeys is kind of crazy. Yeah. Coming up from nothing. And one of my biggest influences is like Donald Glover, uh-huh. Childish Gambino. Yeah. I can confidently say with no exaggeration, he's a modern day renaissance man. Oh, that man can speak. He can do everything. He I mean, can. he, I mean the fact, yeah, yeah there's, there's, the fact that he's a Grammy Award, Emmy Award, and he has like his own Netflix special, he's right. like, what can he not do? Exactly. He can sing, he can like he act, can dance. he can dance, right. he can, he's funny. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I, I would love to be like a multi-dimensional actor, entertainer. Entertainer. Like, you know, that's, mm. that's super cool. And some of my Korean influences, Hwang Jung-min is one of my favorite Korean okay. actors. Oh. Um, but... Yeah, I, I love him. And Interesting. I think I, I, don't, so I, I wouldn't have thought you would have said that. Hong Jung Min. Yeah. There are a few people I've met that like that's their favorite actor. And, oh, Interesting. I, I love him so much from huh. um, Shin Sege New World. Yeah, yeah, New oh World. Oh my yeah, god, yeah, yeah, yeah. he Yo, is fire. So badass. Fire, fire, fire. Because he can play like that very wholesome, nice guy. Because uh, uh. he has like that charming smile. Right. But he can be kind of scary. Right. And that versatility. Right. And, and you can really change cool. it up real oh, quick. Oh yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. So if you could remove all barriers, right? Sure. Financially, whatever. Mm-hmm. What is one project that you would want to work on? So something that I had to drop, funny you mentioned that, something that I had to drop that I started in Georgia Okay. that I would love to bring back into production is I started my own game show. Got it. Oh, the All-Star special, right? Atlanta yeah, All-Stars. Yeah, I remember that. I remember and that. And so I, you know, no one take my idea. You know, do, do what you want to with this. But, He'll uh, add me to the show. <laughs> Atlanta All Stars, and so I, I think I was one of the few people that adopted the idea of bringing the concept of Korean game shows and Korean variety shows to the American to America world. to the right. YouTube world to the American world, mm-hmm. and no one was really doing that and giving it from a an Korean American or Asian American exactly. uh-huh. um, perspective. Right, and so at the time I, I did like five episodes just with friends, and it was cool. It was really fun, but it's always been in the back of my mind and I do want to eventually bring it back when I can. So you kind of want to do like a running man, but like yeah, English exactly, American version. Exactly. No, I definitely could see, I, I could see that. Oh man, I think that'd be yeah, so that'd be, fun. That'd be fucking hilarious. I mean, it's so yeah, fun. That'd be great. I would love to do something like that yeah. as a long-term project. What's the tall guy's name on running man? Hwangzu? Yeah, I could be him. He's so Call me Groot, bro. I could be Groot. <laughs> He's so good. I love Hwangzu. Yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, so if you could hold on to one memory that you've had so far, forever, and look back on it and be proud of it. What is that one memory? Man, oh. I know you have tons. Oh, no. <laughs> but if you were to choose one. You know, like, the CNN thing is really cool. Yeah? The fact that I was able to have a live interview. Mm-hmm. Um, not a, a lot of people can say that. Even, like, a lot of, like, A-list get to have an international live interview mm-hmm, opportunity mm-hmm. with CNN. And so that's just something that was really cool. The fact that I, yeah, the world yeah. got to see me. Whoever was right. tuning in that morning. Exactly. Um, it just really objectively pulled me out of my small circle. Mm-hmm. And just, it made me think outside the box mm. and just think that, oh, you know what? Like, I could potentially have a global reach. Yeah, you could. That's the goal. Yeah. Why, why limit myself to Georgia? Why limit myself just to like LA or California? Why not aim for just the being world. an international right. superstar? Why can't you be Kevin Hart? Right, it's people people always like made that comparison. Maybe you know, like it's like the Asian Kevin Hart or whatever. Yeah. But like, why not? Why not? Why not? You might, why not? You might as well reach for the stars and at least get the mountains, right? Exactly. Why not? Yeah. 
That's what's yeah. up. Okay. So, if, so you know, just to like wrap things up, you sure. know. So here, you know, at Child's Play with Sam Kim, you know. So we have a vision here to always dream your wildest dreams. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Where do I see what? So my long-term goal right now mm -hmm. is Hollywood. Okay. Like, like I said, um, I want to be on the big screen. And I, th I think I, ca I can do it. I, you know, um, and I would love to hopefully one... One of my small steps is I would love to be featured on one of the major streaming platforms. Netflix, Hulu, gotcha. you know, Amazon Prime, HBO, whatever. Um, that's my next big goal, uh -huh. to, to have a feature on that. So do you want to do like a drama or you want to be like a host, like Asian Bachelor host? Or I, like I, really wanted to, I really want to dive more into the acting. Okay. Um, and I love drama. A lot okay. of people don't know that about me, but like, yeah. I, I think I could do serious roles. And yeah. that's the whole plight of a comedian. Of course. They want to be seen more as just like a funny guy right, right, that cracks right. jokes all uh -huh. the time. And so, yeah, that's my thing too. I would love to be taken seriously at mm -hmm. times and, and showcase my serious side, my dramatic side. Right. I love drama. And... And I don't say this too often, but one of my long, long-term goals is I would love to be the first um, Asian late-night talk show host. Ah, like I, Late Nights with I, I Jun Lee. I can see that. I can you see know, that happening. The Letterman, the right. Conan. No, I can see that know, happening. The Leno. And so to sure. have my own late-night talk show host, um, I mean, that would be wild. Right, right. <laughs> I, I honestly think for you, like where you are and the path that you are in, yeah. I think if you keep being consistent and keep striving you know, and believing yourself, mm -hmm. like, dude, I think that's the least of your worries, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think that, like, genuinely speaking, I think when people view you, mm -hmm. they see an authentic person. Okay. You know? And they see that, yes, views is nice. Yes, instant gratification is nice. Right. But you're bringing happiness to people during a time of pandemic. Mm -hmm. Or not even during a pandemic. Right. When they're sad. Yep. Or even when they're happy, yep. you know, you're bringing that sense of like joy mm -hmm. for that couple of seconds or minutes in their life exactly. that could change their entire week. You know what I mean? Dude, the, what you just said is crazy because um, I actually want to go back. One of the best compliments I ever received uh -huh. to what you just said, it reminded me. Yeah, one of the best compliments I ever received that I'll never forget is... Once I received the DM uh -huh. that I, I think I posted a while ago, but this girl was saying, um, I was about to commit suicide this week. Right. Like I was about to pull the trigger. Got it. And I came across, I don't know if she was already following me, but anyways, mm -hmm. she's like, I was watching your videos and I was just like going down your page and you were one of the pivotal reasons for me not to go through with it. Right. And I will never forget that. Yeah, that gave me tingles. Bro. It, it, it gave me, gave me chills and yeah. I quite literally saved a life. Yeah. And that's the power of comedy. That's the power right. of humor and entertainment. Right. And it, it validated me in my journey. I was like, no, this is, we need people like this. We right. need more creators. We need more actors and entertainers out there right. because, you know, there's things about me that a doctor with 10 years of knowledge and experience can't do you know exactly, what i mean exactly you know i'm not trying to like compare or anything like that but man hearing that and receiving that mm -hmm. it just brought me it, it really humbled me because i was so fixated on like how many comments how many likes how many views i'm getting mm -hmm. but i'm like no 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 i literally made someone's day or right changed someone's life right. and and compared to comments like you you've actually saved someone's life yeah you and, know what i mean and, and that's fucking nuts I wouldn't trade that for anything. Right. That's that's priceless. Yeah. It's, no, that really is. No, that's that, yeah. That, is. that will stick with me forever. Uh, so you know, after everything's done, and you know, we're six feet under, uh -huh. right? There's something with the tombstone yeah. that says June Ajumali, right? <laughs> How would you like to be remembered as? Um, I think it's. Yeah, I think you actually touched upon this earlier, but I just want to be known hopefully as someone that was authentic okay and just like true to myself and hopefully i can be someone that's comfortable in my insecurities too Got it. just to help give an example that you know like even the giants have their battles uh -huh. and insecurities sure. right um and i just want to be known as someone like that because i want to just set the example that of how far authenticity can take you mm-hmm and you'd be surprised that if you are have a little bit more self-esteem and confidence in yourself mm -hmm. and just 
you're like, oh no, I'm kind of a badass. Like I'm right. kind of dope. Right, right, right. Like I'm kind of awesome. How far that can take you? Right. And, and no one believes in yourself, but yeah, yourself. Yeah, and you are your biggest critic. Yeah, you are. You are. You really are. You really are. Yep. And I think everyone has a certain characteristic trait mm -hmm. or physical quality mm -hmm. about them that someone else is coveting. Someone else is looking at you right now and is like, man, I wish I had that specific trait or quality that this person has. Mm -hmm. So you need to acknowledge that about yourself. Right. That. There is an it factor about you too. And I feel like you have the it factor now. I feel like I've seen a uh, quarantine and chill video and a guy literally bought the same glasses, glasses as you. That was such he a was cool just, He was just like, yo, bro, I got these because of you. And I was, I was dying laughing because I was just like, yo, man, this man just changed this guy's style. You know? And that was so funny to me. You know what I mean? Because it was the exact same glasses. <laughs> And his name is June. Uh, really? His, his name, name is June. June. That's fucking hilarious. His That's name great. is June, and That's he's great. like, "Yo, I bought these glasses because of you." I'm like, "Yo, what's up, son?" And, and he's older than me too. Right, right, <laughs> right, 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 right. Right, right. Oh, that was uh, that was really cool. That was a cool moment. <laughs> so, but anyways, I appreciate you know you being on the podcast. Thank you. You know what I mean? It was great speaking to you. Mm -hmm. You know, and I hope you know the listeners got to kind of see your journey yeah. from where you started to where you are now. And hopefully, you know, as for them, when they see the struggle, yeah. they could see it and say, it's child's play. Why? Mm. Because they heard your struggle. And now when they face the same struggle, they'll know what to do and how to react. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. Just embrace it. Man. Just embrace it. Right. Just embrace it. Just mm -hmm. go with it. And uh, no. Yeah. For real. Uh, thank you for. I'm honored to be your first guest. No, I'm excited sure. to kind of see where this goes. Yeah. And um, hopefully... Uh, I'll come back and have some updates for you in no, the future. For sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hopefully in the future episodes, you know, when new things come around. You know, when I'll, I'll be back to promote my Netflix special. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Na late night show with uh, June Lee. Give me, give me 15 years. <laughs> right, right, right. No, I believe, I believe. It'll make it happen. But yeah, I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you so much, Sam. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Sure. For sure. So we just finished our interview between me and June. And now we're going to go to our second part of the piece, which is a skit, Playground Full of Knowledge, where we're going to do a TikTok dance. <laughs> yes, of Nuna by Jesse, um, a recent video that I just uploaded. <laughs> <laughs>